What's up guys? I'm here with Sterling. He's a uh, B Team Brown Belt. Been training with us for what, close to two years now, right? Yeah. Year and a half. Uh, and he recently had a match on Thursday Night Jiu Jitsu where he subbed a super tough opponent, uh, Sean, you know, a super strong wrestler. And Sterling was able to hit a sumigeshi, ended up taking his back when Sean came to, uh, to wrestle up, and then uh, finished a weird variation of the twister. So I just started off with the sumigeshi here at an overhook, and then I was trying to get an underhook here on this arm, and he starts to shove the arm back in. And originally, I wanted to go to the right side, but he was giving me strong left, so all I did was I did a strong hook with my left leg, and I posted in the mat with my right leg, and I just pushed it over the top. Try to come up here with his ar arms tucked in to keep him from uh, from uh, wrestling up to the top. But he ends up wrestling up to the top. I was able to take a belly wizard. From here, I just tried to stuff his head until I was finally able to get my leg to the right side and start inserting the hook here. And start swinging to the back. So from here, I just try to sit to the back, get this under hook, and start uh, locking in my triangle immediately. And he has a does a good job at taking a double hand grip on my arms here. And I couldn't clear this, so he starts getting an arm over the head. From here, I just try to keep my twister, uh, my uh, my hook locked in behind his leg here, and trying to peel his hand, so I can start pummeling under his arm like a normal twister. From here, I try to keep my legs clamped and just grab his head and get a good squeeze. So here's my take on the uh, sequences that Sterling hit. Um, he did a very good job of going side to side with the sumigeshis. You know, a lot of times you'll see people, they go out and they just try to sumigeshi in one direction. Uh, he did a very good job of attempting a sumigeshi in one direction and then when he felt resistance going back in the other. Uh, so that was very good. He hit a beautiful back take out of the belly wizard. Um, did a super good job of just pumping his knee around. And then as uh, Sean went to sit, he ended up going into a, a truck, which is also very nice. Um, the one criticism I would have is for the back control. Okay, so Sterling was on his back, and he had the, uh, the body triangle locked. Okay, from here, Sean took a, uh, a two-on-one, and he brought it up and over the head uh, to this side. Exactly. And that's what allowed him to start turning in. Okay, it ended up leading into that weird variation of the twister, but the safer bet would be to just continue to hold the back. Okay, one thing that I like to do when people take this two-on-one grips is number one, I want to take my own one-on-one. -on -one, okay, this is going to make it a lot, lot more difficult for him to start shooting my hand up towards the ceiling because now I have my one-on-one -on -one grip to try and uh, keep his hands pinned to his chest. Okay, from here, I always like to start threatening to trap an arm. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll uh, unlock my body triangle and I'll post on the hip and I'll use this to push him down and ride my left leg up higher. And that way, now, if he keeps this two-on-one, I can start to throw my feet over and connect my heels. Then from here, I can start to push with my feet so that I can separate, and now I have his arm trapped. From here, it depends what he does. If he starts to bridge back up into me, I can start coming into my strangles, or if he stays where he is, I can start swimming my hand underneath, going elbow deep, and I think about connecting his knuckles to my chest. Now, to actually lock up a back triangle, I first need to transfer over to my right hip. So I'll kind of push with my hamstring and his shoulder, and at the same time, I'll just transfer over towards my right hip. Now, it's super important that when we get here, we first want to think about connecting heel and knee together. A lot of people make the mistake of locking, but this exposes my top leg to being grabbed. He can trap it with his legs, he can start bringing it up, cause a bunch of problems. So, when we first get to this position, what we want to do is connect heel and knee together, and then we don't really want to extend super far across. We want to make cover as little distance as possible, so we just extend. Once we got the figure four locked, we immediately tuck it behind his back, so that way there's no way that he can start to, to fiddle with my secondary legs. Overall, I thought it was a 
very good performance from Sterling. You know, I know Sean. You know, I train at the, uh, the Tempe Open match on Sunday. Sean is a super tough wrestler. Um, you know, I thought that this was honestly going to be a much tougher match for Sterling than it was. Uh, but he went out there, hit a beautiful simulation in the beginning, put a beautiful back take off of the belly wizard, and then finished a weird variation of the twister that I, I've never seen before. So yeah, Sterling's been killing it on the local scene, so make sure you guys check him out. I haven't been able to be anywhere with as much high-level training as this any time in my uh, whole jiu-jitsu career, and it's really helped me like elevate my game to new levels. And uh, I see techniques that I haven't seen a million times before and stuff like that. So it's been it's been great being here and uh, getting to train with all the coaches and getting that coaching from these guys.